Hold up. This isn't some cheesy kid show. This is Kids in the Tank, a young perspective on business from high school students. Welcome to Kids in the Tank. I'm Kevin, and here with me is Aaron Daniel, and today we're honored to have Bill Davis as our guest speaker. Thank you. Bill Davis is a vice president at uh, Snap-on, yep. Snap and he's the vice, vice president, president of sales and marketing. Sales yep. and marketing. Thank for you, Bill. Industrial. You're welcome. Yep. And you're officially in the hot seat. All right. Awesome. Glad to be here. Thanks, guys. So, Bill, um, yeah. given your ex extensive knowledge, what is your favorite tool? Ooh. Hmm. Favorite power tool. We have an awesome compact drill that uh, builds um, airplanes, um, mm. helps go through uh, military and commercial aircraft uh, when you have to connect all the different uh, pieces to the airplane. Um, we make the best in the world, and I would say it's my favorite tool. Sounds awesome. <laughs> it is awesome, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, what sacrifices have you made in order to get where you are in your career today, and do you find you will have to continue to make sacrifices in order to get higher in your career. So the, the term sacrifice, I would, um, I would say, is probably one of the more difficult words that you're, uh, you're asking me to describe because there is sacrifice to anything you commit to, right? And it's sacrifice of time. Um, it's sacrifice of your emotions. Um, uh, it's sacrifice of failure, right? So it, the most important thing I've been able to do Fortunately for me is balance my home life with my work life. Um, but I will say that um, That there has been challenges to that and so I think my family has maybe sacrificed more than I have okay. um, Because of the amount of time it takes to commit and travel the world and do the things you need to do um, To build the brands that I've been um, I'm so blessed to, to build um, now moving forward, you know one of the things that happens in in as you go through life is your your kids grow up and then they go through school then they go and have their own family so this it will it's less of a sacrifice to be honest with you um to put more time in as you get older um because your work-life balance can actually have a little bit uh, of a different relationship from a, a um, percentage of time spent so um i do expect to put more time in moving forward okay yeah, yeah uh, i have a follow-up question on sure. that so me personally, I feel like I end up sacrificing more and more as high school has gone throughout naturally. Like you go from freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year, you just keep on sacrificing more and more time and dedicating more to your craft. Mm -hmm. And where would you see us balancing that equally in college? There's going to come a point when sacrifice becomes passion, right? And you stop using the term sacrifice and start using the term what you love to do, okay. right? When you can start to use um, uh, descriptors as as love and and um, and truly enjoy from the, from your core when you describe the work you're doing, you no longer are sacrificing really, right? So I think when you know what you describe as kind of the the, the additional sacrifice that can be a, you know in my opinion can be um, equated to the additional responsibilities that you have, right? And then there's going to be that you know that you know crazy question of okay where are you going to go to school and what do you want to do and that's going to feel like a ton of sacrifice because you're going to have to make sure you do a certain sat or act whichever you're you know going to be testing out with you're going to have to choose your school apply for your scholarships right and all those sacrifices that come along with that eventually that will turn into passion and you're going to start to love to learn and that's when life is awesome okay thank you you're welcome. all right bill so yeah. what are some of your strongest and weaknesses in your career hmm well, we talked a little bit about the weaknesses, yeah. and I won't go into all that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I won't go into all that stuff for the sake of my own career at this point. But, um, but um, you, you know, I would say that one of the weaknesses that I have, especially in the role that I have now, is I'm not an engineer. Um, so I, it's difficult for me to have a um, a toe to toe conversation with our really talented, extremely intelligent engineers about what I want to do for the market, um, because I can't speak in gearing and power ratios and um, torque outputs and PSI inputs and all the things that go around power tools, right? Um, so that would definitely be a weakness and it's something I um, I think I'm self-aware enough to know um, not to fake it, right? Because then you're really in trouble, right? Yeah. Um, I would say that one of my strengths though is that I'm relatable and I, I truly care about every single person that is around me. Um, whether you work for me or not is irrelevant. Um, I hope that I can have a positive influence. Um, no matter who I meet in my day, um, my goal is to have a positive influence, and I think that's positive. All right, all right. So how do you overcome those weaknesses? Um, don't fake it. Um, right. So be aware. 
you know, it's um, one of the things I think I learned early on is this a phrase called know what you don't know. Um, and, and I think that's an important acknowledgement be, to be self-aware. Um, one of the things, and you guys see it with your own experience and your own friend group and your own teacher group, right, that you you interact with, there are people that you know are kind of mm, not, not really, <laughs> yeah. not all there, but they're trying to act like they're all there, right? Um, so don't be that guy, right? Be the guy that is, is um, pure and, and intent and, um, and caring with your message. Yeah. As we can see from your link profile page, yeah. <laughs> for the past 20 years, you have worked in management position. Yeah. positions for six different companies how, yeah. did they, how did they differ from one another oh, yeah um that's actually an interesting question because the the industries I, I have been very fortunate to be in multiple industries and i do think that that kind of builds that background of context when i make decisions um but you know i would say initially my answer would be that all companies are fairly similar right you have the same you know business objectives you know people want to grow market share and grow profitability right you have the same cultural challenges, right? You have, um, sometimes you hear them as called silos or, you know, business teams that may or may not get along. Of course, you have personalities um, that you have to figure out how to navigate through. So from that perspective, regardless of the industry, um, businesses are fairly similar, right? Um, there's scale differences, right? Working for a $200 million company for a $200 billion company, there's a scale difference, right? You have... Um, I'll tell you the ladder feels better sometimes, right? Because <laughs> you have a lot more resources, right? Um, but um, but that um, but that uh, flexibility and um, entrepreneurship tends to reside more on the smaller companies, and that feels better there. So um, each each business has its positives and negatives. And honestly, as an employee, your job is number one to find positive, no matter what it is, right? And figure out how you can influence the business in a positive way. Uh, follow up question on that. Good. Uh, as an employee, what would you find to be the most ideal personality type or something that you could do to improve or, um, I guess, get a raise or get a promoted uh -huh. as fast as possible? <laughs> yeah. I didn't like, know you were going to yeah. go to the raise part. I yeah. thought like, what's the best employee style, right? It's okay, like, so get a raise. Um, the best way to get a raise is show value. Um, be patient, right? There's um, The concept of time sometimes gets a little bit out of scope. Um, you know, as you go through your high school and college, there's a four-year gap, four-year gap, right? You know, typically, right? Unless yeah. you do your um, victory lap, which we talked about in the, <laughs> the other room, right? Um, but, but the best thing you can do, and that's your, your specific question, is show value, right? Show that you care about that company. You are not there to get a paycheck. As soon as you start thinking about your paycheck, you become less valuable, right? You're there to help that company succeed, you're doing everything you think about that company every waking moment. You should wake up thinking, man, how can I do better at what my role is, right? I think there's, there's you've heard about the three R's um, or, yeah, rhythm, uh, let's see, what is it? Reading, writing, arithmetic, right? You've yes. heard that from yeah. old school. I, I've, I've termed three R's in, in modern business as know your role, your rank, and your responsibility, right? It's, you, you, you need to approach your business for what you were hired to do. And believe me when I tell you at 20 or at 25, you're not president, right? Unless you own your own company, right? That's not your role. It's not your rank. It's not your responsibility, right? You need to learn the business. Take passion at learning the business. Learn what your role is. How can I help that company succeed? And if you can embrace that, you will be on a faster track to your success, which is your end game of making more money. Thank you. You're welcome. At the start of your career, did you expect to switch from company to no. company? And no, no, I grew up. Oh boy, yeah, my mother, my mother is so so angry at me about changing companies. She, um, so I grew up in a family that I, my both my parents were union employees. They they worked at the same company for forty five years. It the whole concept of changing companies was so foreign to them. And when I first changed companies. They, oh my goodness, my mother, you would have thought that I did something bad, right? I mean, I'm like, mom, it's okay, right? Um, and she still, I mean, still, I'm 51 years old and my mother still kind of gets on me about changing companies. I'm like, come on, it's cool. I got a good job. Um, but um, so to answer your question, I did not have an intention of changing companies, but I did choose to control my destiny as much as I could. What, yeah. what like motivated you to switch companies so much? Um, so I had an awesome mentor when I first, my first job in Chicago, worked for a company called Lawson Products and a guy named Bob Blecka. Um, Bob hired me three weeks before my wedding. 
Um, I was sleeping on the couch of my in-laws, my future in-laws house, <laughs> uh, real talk, right? And I didn't know anybody. Remember, I grew up in Ohio, went to school in Minnesota, right? Um, and Bob brought me on because he could kind of see something in me, right? And he mentored me. And after seven years at that company, he said, Bill, you need to learn manufacturing. You can't, you can't be a great distribution guy if you don't understand manufacturing. So he encouraged me to leave. And keep in mind, he hired me back about eight years later, right? So it, um, it wasn't to get rid of me, right? <laughs> it felt like it, there were times where I'm like, hey, Bob, hello, remember me? Um, but it was really important to get context and to get that kind of scope in your career. Um, so that's why I left. Yeah. Is that normal for someone to like switch back and forth from companies? or No. Like, no? Okay. I would say, I don't know. No, no normal. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't encourage. I okay. I wouldn't encourage doing what I did. I got super lucky. Remember, <laughs> definition of lucky. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, but um, I do think it's important to get that um, some context. Get get diversity in your background. Right. Understand um, foreign business and foreign business relationships. Understand manufacturing versus distribution. Understand technology versus industrial. Right. It, the more you can get context to things, the more valuable you'll be as you build your career. Um, I say that with my one of my uh, my best friends who've never left their company. They've been there 30, 40 years, so and they're very successful. So there's there's more ways than one to be successful. I believe you cut back the uh, peel back the onion, and the core is make sure you work for the right reasons. Yep. Right, be passionate about what you do, always learn, strive to be better. Um, those types of core things versus moving company to company. The core is more important. Okay. Thank you. Uh, another question. Uh, what are you doing to ensure that you continue to grow and develop as a leader throughout your career? Yeah. Um, I, I try to ask a lot of questions. Um, I am willing to be wrong. Um, I'm willing to make mistakes. So I, um, I will um, put myself in uncomfortable situations to try to learn and understand um, diversity of business, right? Um, foreign country um, transactions, try to get in, engaged in what that means, not necessarily so I can go to a certain country, but so I can understand what's important in certain markets, right? Um, those would be the things I would say. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you for answering our questions. Yeah. We'll now be moving on to the next segment. <laughs> awesome. Uh, flip it. Well, you'll be asking yeah. us the questions. Okay. Great. Yep. Should I start that now? Yeah. I don't have yep. the cards. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, so, so here's what I, I, I find so... Um, I, I, I mentioned it to you guys earlier, but it's so awesome what you guys are doing and the commitment that you made. Um, so I'm going to start with you, and I'll, I'll roll around here, right? Okay. So, so for you, um, what what are you most interested in related to getting out of this class? Like, what why are you doing this every Wednesday for eight weeks? Like, I really don't have an idea of what I want to do after high school. Yep. But I want to learn something from this class. And have like, you found an opportunity to do that? Yeah. Yeah. So you get it. It feels like with the different folks that you get to speak with, that you you probably get some pretty good insight into one. People are just people, right? Yeah. And there's no reason to be nervous or you know yeah. inf, you know influenced, so to speak. I mean, you'd be respectful, right? Yeah. But you don't have to be scared, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you also get some really interesting, probably backgrounds where they're talking about different markets that probably open up some opportunities that you didn't even know were out there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. And you're what year? I'm a junior. Junior, yeah, good. You were getting right on it. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so for you, you're. Um, I'm curious how how do you feel? You're you're a very good cross country athlete, right? I assume you sure. do some other things as well. I know you're good, girl, because we talked about that, right? So, um, how do you feel? You translate that into your schoolwork, and what do you think you want to do afterwards? Um, honestly, right now I have no idea what I want to do after I get out of high school, but. Um, I like the how I learned to balance my schoolwork and sports. Also, right. that I think that really will help me in my future in learning how to balance work and family life at home. Also, yeah. so I think that's that's really helped me in my high school career. Yeah, I I've always found, and I had mentioned that you know I did youth football. You know, I coached youth football. Yeah, because right, TJ and I. Um, <laughs> I think I think the more you have on your plate, the better you tend to do in those things, right? Because it kind of gets you, it forces that discipline, right? You you know you have to do homework three hours a yeah. day because you got to <laughs> practice two hours a day, yeah. got, right? I mean, it forces it rather than give you too many options to kind of wander and do other things, right? Yeah. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Uh, she's gonna win yeah. state, by the way. Oh yeah. She <laughs> <is>. yeah. <laughs> hey, no pressure though, right? Yeah. Um, and then, and then for you, so what year are you? I'm a senior. You're a senior because yep. you, you kind of come off as a senior a little bit, all right? That's, <laughs> so what um, from your experience, who what have you found to be the favorite type of type of information so not necessarily who's your favorite 
person that spoke, Bill Davis. It's more the what type of information have you found to be um, most valuable to you? To me, I I need to find motivation because personally for me, I don't have a mentor. I don't have someone that's always been behind me pushing me. Okay. So I like to listen to what people do and what pushes them in the morning, what gets them going, what's, what's their drive. That's for me the, the most valuable thing I can get out of this is what do you do to make you do what you want to do the best you can possibly do it. It's like I need to find something for me that is something that drives me forward, that makes me want to get up in the morning, that makes mm -hmm. me want to work as hard as I can every single day and just be successful. That's yeah. what's what I want to find and that's what I found to be the most valuable. Yeah. And I bet you've heard from the folks that you've talked to a lot of self-motivation. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's really probably important for you to get that context that you own you, right? And you, you're blessed with influence, right? You're blessed with mentors, but you own you. No matter what other outside voice and noise you have, you own you. So you be who you're going to be. You be the best you, right? You own that. All right. Yeah, that's awesome. Good. Thank you. Yep. So, is that good? Do I need more questions? I don't know if there was a... I mean, <laughs> there's any more you questions. can ask as many as you want. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just so super impressed with the group, and um, the, I think the opportunity you guys have is awesome, and, and I really, really appreciate the uh, the engagement that all you guys have had. So, thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, back going to back to my response, I yeah. was wondering, uh, what pushed you the most when you were younger? Okay, so I, um, I grew up with three older brothers that were much older. Um, I, I described my physical and um, athletic prowess, right? Uh, yes. Which was not, not good. Um, <laughs> and I think I chose to own a different path, right? I, I knew I wanted to go to school farther away because I wanted to get the experience the first time I ever drove through the city of Chicago, I told myself that's where I want to live. Um, I had never seen buildings like that before. Um, I had never seen highways that were that crowded before. And I said, man, this is awesome. <laughs> I want to live here. And, and, um, and that was self-motivation. I started my first business in college after I had uh, two knee surgeries from football um, because it was an opportunity, right? So, so diversity gives you opportunity. Adversity gives you opportunity, right? Um, and that's um, that is goes back to it's on you, right? I owned what I did, right? I'm not going to let any outside influence determine that, and I chose to be the best at what I can do, um, and it worked. Thank goodness. <laughs> thank goodness. Yeah. yeah, you're here with us now. Um, if anyone has any more questions, no? I'm good. I All right. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well. A quick shout out, or thank you for joining us <laughs> on Kids in the Tank. Right on, <laughs> yeah, no we appreciate problem. your insight. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks very much. Yeah, thank you so much. Yep. Prestige Paints is changing the way you buy paint. We're the number one selling brand of interior and exterior paint on Amazon.com. And with the help of our app, Prestige Color Pick, we're making paint buying a whole lot easier. With the app, you can take a picture of your wall and then virtually paint it with any of our 2,400 plus colors. And now you can try our competitors' colors on your walls, too. Once you find the color you love, you can purchase it from Amazon right through the app, saving yourself a trip to the store. Prestige Color Pick is free and available through the App Store and Google Play. Live colorfully and design your life with Prestige. Hi, this is Mike Butler with Elkhorn Chemical and Packaging. We've been in business for 65 years. We're located in Wisconsin. We represent the janitorial, packaging, safety, and maintenance categories. We sell to small businesses all the way to large corporations. So, if you're in need of a cleanup in aisle 9, give us a call at 800-377-3556 or check us out at elkhornchemical.com. Welcome back to Kids in the Tank. We're now entering the third and final segment, the round table, where we'll be talking about hot topics and trends. <laughs> All right, first up, we have Pixel Buds. Like, what are these? And okay, Yeah, so you were talking to me about this earlier, and I kind of got the gist of it, but if you could explain it, like... So, I forgot what company it put these out, but the coolest feature I thought was the translation um, feature of it. So, if you go to, like, a restaurant uh, in a foreign country, and you're reading off the menu, and you want to tell them what it is, well, you apparently tell the earbuds, like 
translate to Italian, whatever. Are they so, just like earbuds? Like, 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 yeah. Like, oh, okay. Like, there's, they're connected by kind of like a rope, a corded string, like, instead of just like the soft plastic that's normally on earbuds now that yeah. we have. But, so this translation thing, like, you can say translate to Italian, and so you'll say it in, like, you'll you'll just say the, whatever you're reading, and then it's going to tell you in your ear what, like, it means. And you just have to repeat it? So it's like Google Translate. Or, <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> but in your earbuds, and so Which then, you could do with your phone. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, it has some other features, but then also if the wait, like, if the waiter said something back to you in Italian, it would translate that to you, so then you knew what they were saying. Yeah, I mean, kind of cool, but also, like... I mean, I wouldn't, yes, I wouldn't get yes, these for no. Christmas, but, like... Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, but... I don't know the price on. cost, yeah. the dollar price of them, either. I feel like there's be. a holiday before Christmas, though, wasn't there? There at, is. At, at one point, there was. I could have sworn. <laughs> Might be called the forgotten holiday, <laughs> the but... The forgotten holiday. For Thanksgiving, honestly. I don't remember the last time I was excited for Thanksgiving. My family comes over, nope. and they are loud. I love them to death, but they are loud, <laughs> and I just love quiet, and they just don't bring it, and it's sad. <laughs> Uh, what are you guys doing for Thanksgiving? Uh, I volunteer at a, like, community event that gives food that, like, packages food and delivers it to people, or you can come and, like, eat food for free. Oh, that's nice. You guys give cereal out? Uh, no. Or soup? No. 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 <laughs> cereal <laughs> is not a soup. Okay. All right. I personally so, believe that soup is hot. So, cereal yeah, from Wikipedia, it says that soup is primarily a liquid, <laughs> a liquid food and generally served warm or hot. So all I'm saying right. cereal is not nope. at all soup. Cereal nope. is a soup. It There's is like, chunks in it. Soup doesn't have <laughs> chunks? Okay, but like... I think I think it's more of a stew. Well, stew. No, 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 no. This is just... Okay, yeah. <laughs> Yes, cereal is not a soup. All right. Final well, decision. Whatever you say. You know, fine, state champ. I oh, get it. Hey, you, hey. you make the rules, no. I guess. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, yeah. Go so, for... you can oh, go. Okay. <laughs> I mean, like, it's kind of weird. I remember freshman year, and I remember seeing you, and it's like, oh, you're in cross country. That's the thing you do, but now you're here as a state champ. I'm not a state champ. You're okay. going okay. to be a state champ. Top 10. Top 10. You're, you're going to that's, be Yeah, a... let's do that. Top, top 10. 10. All right, fine. That's, that's more champ. reasonable. <laughs> state champ, top 10. All right. Uh, what do you miss about freshman year? Because I miss a lot. Absolutely, <laughs> my grades. Nazi. They were so good. <laughs> That's true. They were they were phenomenal freshman year. Honestly, All this yeah. Time, yeah. Like, yeah. I I loved freshman year, but I didn't realize it at the time. Looking back at it now, I loved it because I had so much free time. And now I don't. My Everything... grades are looking like a lot better senior year than they were freshman year. But like <laughs> everything was a bit easier. But yeah, and I, I, there's not too much that I miss about it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to graduating, not going to lie. I was terrified as a freshman. <laughs> like, I didn't talk to anybody. Because like, yeah, it was like walking know. into freshman year. It's I don't like, oh, that, I'm though. worried about, like... I feel like, like that was definitely Kevin, too. He's like, yeah. this little freshman. Like, I feel like God. I have opened a lot. <laughs> I, was, no, I was honestly <laughs> such a shy little freshman. I was worried about everything, like, what I looked like, what I was wearing. It's like... Yeah. But at least I wasn't the per- type of person that wore socks and sandals, because that... Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Okay, first of all, if you can consider, like, Birkenstocks, they're sandals, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I am a proud supporter are, of socks and sandals. Okay. Like, it's so comfortable. And people can pull them off, but others don't wear them. Like, Please. oh, well, if I get called called out for having Jesus shoes on, like, <laughs> like <laughs> it's it's comfortable. Like, they're just, it, it like, slides. It so bad. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's like, like, your skin's already pasty white, but then it's like, oh, you put um, on socks, and it's bright white. No. It's like, it's illuminated against a black no. or like a dark brown. It's just nasty. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I think they're okay. I mean, to each their own. But like, yeah. To bring things down on like a bit of more serious note. So, have you guys heard about the forest fires happening down oh, in California? Oh yeah. yeah. I haven't heard much about that honestly. We were talking it. about it. Yeah, in AP Gov <laughs> the other day. Um, just like ton, like tons of buildings just taken down, houses. How, how are they started? Like, what, how is it? Natural causes, uh, just a forest yeah. fire. I tell you what they know now. but like. hmm. It's dry. Um, I mean, lightning can start them, different reasons. Yeah. But, yeah. 
Yeah. They're also they're just very hard to stop, and we can see that now with all the destruction it's been causing. We oh. saw a couple videos in AP Gov about them, and it honestly looked like a scene out of hell. Yeah. Because you could just see like the fire coming over the hill, and it's like the house is coming in. It's like it showed you before and after pictures, and it was like, how could this one beautiful area, this beautiful neighborhood, <laughs> like be turned to rubble in a matter of like minutes? Because the mm-hmm. fire just came in and destroyed everything. Are they, like, doing anything about it, though? Like, Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh. It's just so hard to contain, though. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. No. Okay. <sighs> All right. So, speaking of fire and bright colors, <laughs> <laughs> about... color-changing hair dye. Have you guys heard about that? Because I have not. I um, No, I have not. Kate, I'm you want to give us some just insight? just going to say, like, no, don't do it. Like, don't do it. What are you doing? I what is it? I personally don't believe kidding. in dyeing your hair <laughs> in the first place. Like, I don't know. So I don't I understand why pe- some people do it. And, like, when you get older, you obviously want to do it. But when you're younger, like, I don't understand why people dye their hair, like, bright colors and stuff. Nah, I'm all for it. Like, you go, I, I you dye know. your hair. <laughs> really? But, like, do it's you not really need thing. it to be color changing? Like, come on. Would you dye your hair? Bright pink. Bright pink. Yes. Um. Yes. Yes. Not bright. Not <laughs> bright. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I could see Aaron rocking some hot red. No. Like race car red if she's running no. down in her athletic denim. <laughs> <laughs> athletic I denim. Don't oh. understand it. Athletic denim. I don't. I don't know. I do not agree with it at okay. all. I. I it does not sound comfortable. Kind of was looking it up earlier and like just seems like super expensive and like what even what's the difference with it? Like I honestly think it's just more for fashion. I don't think it's like actually actually, actually for it's like a, working it's a trend, out. You know? Yeah. But yeah. I don't know. I I, mean, well, I could see people I wouldn't s- wear it. <laughs> I could see people in the World Series like wearing it just like to advertise it or something. Oh, yeah. Um no. Fashion shows. <laughs> Fashion shows, World Series, just everywhere. World Choo-choo. Series. Who knows anything about the World Series right now? I don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, no. Come on, Kevin. <laughs> Aren't you guys in AP Gov? So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Honestly, I know nothing about the World Series this year. The Cubs lost, so Calling me out I'm for out. It. Yeah. That's about oh. it. Who won? Didn't the Dodgers... No, there going? hasn't been a winner yet. Didn't they, like, beat the Cubs, though? Yeah. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, no, don't, no. That's, what, that's what I heard. I don't know. I don't no. know if it's true or not. I, I wouldn't. I mean. I don't know. So, there is actually something kind of weird going on. It's completely off topic. But, like, it's on Amazon Keys. Have you guys heard about that yet? No. Oh, yeah. Very okay. creepy. Sounds terrifying. Um, I'm not going to let you. I'm not going to pay you, like, $250. To be able to bring my shipments from Amazon into my house, like, like I'm not gonna give you a key <laughs> to your house. Yeah, yeah. And let well, you go I'm going to pay a hundred more from Amazon Prime already. Yeah, it's like a hundred plus dollars already, just to let someone break into my house. They're not breaking it, but like to let <laughs> someone into my house. I'm sorry, but I like being isolated. I like leaving notes like, hey, if you could like leave this at the door, not ring the doorbell, send me an email, <laughs> send me a message, just don't knock on the door. I my don't want to see you. <laughs> my package is not getting stolen That when it's sitting outside of my house. Yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure it's not necessary for them to have a key for my house to put my packages inside. I'm not going to be too worried about it. I mean, there is something I am worried about on a personal level. Anti memes, okay? That's not funny. <laughs> they it's are not a really thing. It's funny. I, they they are I funny. don't think they're funny at all. If you yeah. have not seen them, like, go look them up. Like, they're just kind of like ironic. Don't I look feel them up. Like. <laughs> no. no. You look them up if you want to have a they're, bad time. Yeah, they're, they're no. not funny. No, memes are funny. Like, memes are funny, but like, I like had to look up anti memes, and I was like, okay, I. No. Okay, no, let's take all the funniness like, of the joke <laughs> and remove it. <laughs> let's make it as boring as possible. Okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. Talking about boring, how about trunk or treaty? I don't think that's very boring. Okay, it's uh, like... I think it's pretty cool. You, like, decorate your car and you, like... I don't know, have people walk up to it and... I don't know, I think it's pretty cool. I think I'd, I'd rather have it. people ro- walk up to the back of my car okay, than yeah, that's my house. <laughs> that sounds really creepy, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. No, I don't know. I like the idea. It's like you decorate your car. It I looks think really it, cool. Yeah, and a lot of people like do it at like 
they have like little parties for it so you like go around and see the back of everybody's cars that's like taking the exercise out of trick-or-treating Exactly. Like, well, no, walking, you're, you're still, you're still walking around. But yet you're getting candy that you're going to go and later eat. And, like, you, well, you didn't burn off those calories. So yeah, now guess, you don't yeah. deserve that, <laughs> that candy. So, I mean, yeah. trick-or-treating for me has always been a very sentimental moment for me because I love trick-or-treating. <laughs> I don't I, understand I will always it. go trick-or-treating. <laughs> I don't understand <laughs> it. <laughs> what was your – what did you dress up as? Oh, God, it's been a while. I haven't gone in a while. Guys, it makes me really sad. I have the best costume this year, though. I'm a cow. Oh, yeah. I'm a cow. Relatable. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wisconsin yeah, yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah, that's what there I mean. There you have it. <laughs> I think the Halloween costume that I wore most when I was little was a unicorn costume. Oh, heck yeah, Katie. <laughs> like, full on. I feel like I wore it more than one year, too. So I was just dedicated to it. I was always that one girl that dressed up as a princess because, you know, yeah. I wanted to be a princess. <laughs> one girl? You mean every girl? <laughs> hey, okay, okay. I wanted to be the special one, though. All right, you are special, Aaron. <laughs> you to be a state champ. All right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. Anyway, how about football player? Ew. Okay. Um, <laughs> football. But speaking of football, how about this um, Brett Hundley? The quarterback? Yeah. What team does he play for? Because <laughs> so, I honestly don't follow up on football. I'm the most if un guy like guy ever. not know, Aaron Rodgers okay. got hurt. <laughs> so, oh, okay. Yes, yes. I have heard about this guy. So, this guy must be the one that's covering for him. Is he good? And, well, I mean,. I'm not a Packer fan, so <laughs> I can't really say anything on that. But, Go sports. <laughs> Go but, sports. Um, I did see a loss the other day for the Packers. So Uh-oh. not too good. Guess not. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, but, if you were watching something, I feel like you'd be watching something on makeup, right? Because you're girls. Um, get it? No. Uh, that's stereotypical. <laughs> All right, fine. I <laughs> yeah, apologize. <what>? No, <laughs> but but. I did see something about peel off makeup. Exactly. Like I have no okay. heard of this. <laughs> One, ew. Like it sounds gross. Yeah. So I looked it up because I was just like, okay, what is this? Like, how do you peel off how do you, makeup? How do you apply it? And <laughs> it says that it comes in forms of eyebrow tints and lip tints and stains. You paint them on wet, wait for them to dry, and then peel them off to reveal a temporary stain behind that can last as long as 12 hours like a stain on your face yeah, is okay. what it is okay but what if you want to change it like what if you're... you can't no changing no Temporary no turning stain. back that's that's yeah. all you that's it's final 12 hours no i i don't think i would do that like what if you mess it up if you're going to a party for like what two hours and then you're gonna go to sleep after that right away you're gonna have that on for when you go to sleep. Like, what if you go to sleep and you leave a smudge on yeah. you? Like, you just go to sleep face down, you wake up, oh, there's my face. <laughs> you got, like, lips <laughs> up on your cheek. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, it's I don't a definite so. no for me. I would not do it. And I personally, I don't even wear makeup that much. I know. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm I don't not know. coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so thank you, everyone, for listening to Kids on the Tank. Make sure you tune in next week. We're our next guest speaker. Eddie Hobo, director and customer experience at Zuitsi. Sounds great. Woo! All right. Wapow. A one, <laughs> a two, a three. Wow! wow. <laughs> that was awful. To learn more about BizTank and this podcast, check out our website at genevasupply.com backslash BizTank or head over to our Facebook pages.